Let's say you're the founding fathers. You got to make laws that are going to be relevant 150 years from now. What, this is what, it. what what laws are you gonna make? Technology, okay, technology is gonna keep developing, right? We're gonna have our neural link. We're all gonna like be able to just like telepathically communicate. Like maybe like maybe it's illegal to like do like a, a DOS attack against somebody's brain chip implant or something. I don't 150 know. years of the future, you can't be specific. You have to yeah. you have to you regulate principles, not you, specific. We should use something about AI though. Yeah. We we have to declare those machines are not people. Yeah, we think you get ahead of it. But hold on, yeah. maybe that's like. Us. But yeah. hold on, I think <laughs> Stephen, what did you just say? You just endorsed AI slavery, Stephen. No, I don't no, know. No, that's, no, wait, 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 that's true. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on that too. They're AI. They're okay, not people. Okay. Are Aww. you trying to get the her? I get ahead of the curve here for when the machines take over. So yes. They'll be like, no, it was on our side from the get go. Yeah, you know I mean, what? I'm here standing up for humanity. You know, what if somebody makes an AI that is like got some specific programming in it to do something that's really horrible yeah. and they want to shut it down but like well no it's a person so it's allowed to say that it's like no. but like but like don't you think that that's going to be relevant like 200 years from now that's why you need to stop now that's because it's relevant doesn't mean we should do it well if you give that thing right you can't just like shut it down you can't unplug it. But, like, yeah. once you crack the nut, it's never going back in the bottle. I no. <laughs> no. I mean, Sorry. look, I get it. These things are like powerful. a mixed metaphor. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> I think, no. No, we don't. No. Yeah. Hey, Noah, do you know what time it is? What time is it, Steven? It's time to talk about death and taxes. Scoo-doo, doo, doo, doo. I'm still doing it. I don't. <laughs> I mean, I want you to do it. <laughs> I just, I just want you to know that I'm watching every time. Yeah. <laughs> Cal- Guys, yeah. welcome to Let's Talk About Death and Taxes. On this show, we talk about death and taxes. The one thing that Benny Franklin says is the two things that are inevitable in life. I just said the one thing that Ben Franklin says are the two things. It doesn't make any sense. You get it. You got it. We're, we're killing this so far. You're like, oh, this is a high-quality podcast. That's what I'm about to watch. Organized. <laughs> God knows this. what he's doing. Um, cool, yeah. These guys are lawyers. They're attorneys at law. They uh, they've studied it. They know it back like the back of their hands. Yeah. Any question? You guys got it. It's they gave me a degree. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do it. People give me money for it. Yes. Sometimes. No. <laughs> tell tell me about your qualifications, boys. Uh, so, <laughs> so yeah. So I'm Stephen. Um, I I did go to law school. I went to Duke. Um, but I own an estate planning law firm in Atlanta. Um. We we help families pre like non traditional weird situations anything like that get their shit together and to I don't know protect their legacy to sleep better at night to not be a question I answer later on yeah mm. Mm. trying to avoid nightmare probate situations and oh yeah I used to do probate litigation I still do them sometimes I like a good nightmare case sometimes because it sharpens me yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. No, it fortifies there's me there's something to that yeah, yeah. something to that. My favorite thing about your career is like you started with the problems and then you like you now you make the band-aids, oh, yeah. problems, right? Or like the problems pay better. Yeah. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> problems pay better. <laughs> so but it's 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 better for everyone in the world to prevent their problems. Yeah. So mm-hmm. sweet. James? Uh yeah, so I'm also a lawyer. I went to Notre Dame Law School and I work for Steven as part of uh, Modern State Planning Best Grabber Law Group. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so basically on this show, we talk about death and taxes. We answer questions from the internet and talk about cool uh, headlines from the news. Um, we talk a little bit about like criminal stuff, but mostly about um, you know estate planning and probate arguments. And uh, yeah, it's a good time. Guys, the first thing that we're going to talk about today <clears throat> is a question from Cora.com. It's more of a personal finance question than anything. It says... I'm an How? expert. I got it. You got it? <laughs> <laughs> How can I make a large inheritance last? Okay, so here's my question to you. Let's say you just inherited half a million dollars. What is the first thing that you guys do? Okay, so... Hire a financial advisor. Yes, I was going to say, hire a financial advisor. Hire, hire someone to protect you from yourself. Yeah. The, just in my personal data, people will blow through an inheritance way faster than they think they will. If you're going to blow through five hundred thousand dollars, how would you personally blow through it? I had to, to pay off law it? school. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not that much, but that would be I'd pay off law school, my mortgage, and be like, oh wait, all my money's gone. Wow. Um, no, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'd buy a boat. I don't like yeah. boats, <laughs> but I would get just one. Just does it have? Yeah, it. like there's a lot of responsible things I could do with that. Yeah, but yeah, for like the like blow it version, I don't know. I'd, Probably like comes kind of like luxury travel. Yeah, yeah. I make a really cool video. I make like the best video ever. Like we bought a yacht, and then I like. I would probably do a long trip. I'd probably go around the world or something. 
That'd be cool. 500 grand, though, I don't think that'll get you, like, a really we great We rented yacht. a yacht. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bilzerian, don't, don't own it. It's, yeah. a, it's a bad investment. Yeah. 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 All my people who own boats tell me the happiest day is when they buy the boat, and the second happiest day is when they sell the boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've heard that too. Like, I've heard really that funny. too. Yeah, both um, are better to rent. But, oh yeah. Okay. If you yes, were to, exactly. If you were to not not blow. My it, grandfather but, had a boat, and we were constantly like cleaning it or scraping shit off of it. It was terrible. Yeah. My dad has a boat, and he loves it. And it's like <laughs> I pristine. will say, like a like a nice pontoon boat. Mm. Those can be fun. That's true. Those are lower maintenance. They're probably cheaper compared to. I feel like there's are. cheaper places though for me to have a drinking habit. <laughs> exactly. I could literally. I have a couch, and I like to be indoor. I like air conditioning. Yeah. Like like hammock, like hammocks. Hammocks <laughs> are also pretty cheap. Oh yo. Hammocks. Yep. Hammock pontoon boat. Kind yeah. Of like, hammock, yeah you, could, you could keep that hammock all I mean, year. I could set a hammock over a kiddie pool anytime. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, oh. like, maybe get a pool. That'd be cool. I think the main <laughs> benefit of boat is is you get the, you know, you're, you're on water, so it's like relaxing. And if you're like real quiet, you can just hear the water and it's, you're by yourself. It's peaceful. That's true. That's but true. there's other ways to find peacefulness that don't involve a money so, pit. Yeah. Yes, exactly. A hammock and a sound machine. If you guys had to responsibly <laughs> uh, spend half a million dollars so that you could kind of ride it and have it boost you throughout your life, what would you do? Well, I would say, spend it. I would say, set up an irrevocable trust with someone I respect. I trusted more than myself to give me the income from it. Okay. Yeah. And I would probably stagger it the gift in a way where I wouldn't have to pay gift tax on it. Mm-hmm. But I would probably, if I was really concerned about myself, I would probably do something like that, or maybe a charitable remainder trust or something. Depends on what I was trying to do with it. But I would probably, probably that'd be more than five hundred thousand. If we're talking like a couple million or something, and that which could happen with a life insurance policy. One leaves you a lot of money in life insurance policy. I don't know. Set up something like that. Have mm-hmm. it eventually get asset protected. Um, with enough time and have someone much be- smarter than you invest it, and if and but also have the power to remove the trustee if they are a fuck up. Let's say yeah. everyone who is smarter than you at investing has suddenly passed away horribly. I don't think that's possible. Well, let's just say it <laughs> Look at my four hundred one k and tell me that that's possible. Let's just say it happened, and then and yeah. then Ceteris Paribus, like the, the, if, the, the world helped, doesn't crash. I, I will. Okay, I, I can have, there's machines that will do it. Okay, okay. I, I, what's what my a, anti AI rant is? Do what you, do you invest you could, in? Oh. What do you invest half a million dollars in? You have to make the decision. If I was going to, if, I, if I was literally going to invest, I'd, I would invest in a startup. Okay, that I believed oh. in. Okay, or I would invest. Uh, I would want Risky. something where uh, you, you well, you'd break it up, but like, you, you could probably make a lot of money by giving like. Instead of like a million dollars to one thing, like a bunch of fifty k, yeah, like seed things runs, to like yeah. seed mm-hmm. things and getting some equity. But and figuring out who was good at running a business. So you'd be a venture capitalist, Steve. Yeah, probably or, uh, or less. Steve. Yeah, yeah. Wow, James. What I would guess you do? so. <laughs> I, I would probably divide it, right? So I would probably take about half of whatever I got, I mean, depending on how much it is, and, and set it in something low risk, um, just like a like a typical mutual fund or something yeah. like that. Something where it's going to be generating, you know, interest, um, but it's safe. Mm-hmm. And then I would probably take another portion of it, and then I would do some of the more risk. Like higher risk, high reward yeah. type stuff. Because I think it, you have to do something with it. Like I wouldn't just let all of it sit because it's a windfall and you want to make something out of it. But at the same time, you know, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to just throw it all away. Right. So I would do a little bit of low risk, low reward, but like consistent reward, and then a little bit of high risk, high reward. But, yeah. But if I was working, I would take a lot more risk. If like if I had my regular income, I'd be like, that's let me yeah. roll, t- let me throw twenty dice out there and see what works. <laughs> that's yeah. a good point. That's, no, that's a good cool. point. That's cool. I Hopefully think I stumble on Uber. But really some of the more profitable businesses are stuff like God, what was it? Um like random things like popsicle like local popsicles or like a surfboard or so yeah. those are random things trying to just be it's financial just powerhouses. Yeah. yeah. With like with people who are like really <laughs> motivated and driven. Yeah. I think what I would do is I would stuff it away and then I would do like I'd probably see how much I would probably try to live on the interest, right? Probably try to live on like three mm-hmm. grand a month forever and be like, great. And then like also like and in that time like work on a business or something. Yeah. And yep. then maybe eat the principal and like like invest the principal. Oh, like long yeah. from like find a way to use it to essentially sustain yourself while you try to do something bigger. Yeah. Yeah. But, that's probably what we have at. enough money. I think I would try to create some sort of cultural fad. 
Yeah, you're gonna so, bring back bell bottoms. No, it's whatever it is, <laughs> uh, is that the Jankos or, yeah, yeah, or Jankos. like pet rocks uh-huh. or something <laughs> random. Does, 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 it's Steven, if, of all the things, I thought you were something. If I was, if I had if if like walk, like Jeff Bezos money or something like that, I'd be like, I'm gonna try to you're create a bring weird back pet cultural rocks. Fe- not not pet rocks per se, but just something that exists in a very per- it would be something brand new, but it would exist in a very particular cultural moment of. And so people look back like a year later, like that was weird. Why did we buy that? That's like like Tamagotchi or some some some, some random Tamagotchi product that dope. people got into it really. I went to people were really intense about like for like hogs. five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> and interesting. Then like, yeah. interesting. Silly man. Make all my money, bands? sell it. Whoever. What, what were those things? Those those um, those bean bag things. Um, Beanie babies. Yeah, exactly. Like, that was supposed to pay for my college. Yeah. Get, get out, get out when it's high. <laughs> I know. I, I know. Yeah. You guys remember Webkins? I'm never mind. Uh, um, no, I'm too old. For anyway, but that, that would be that would be my plan, like one C or D. Like I had a I had a Pokemon card that somebody at the mall offered me a hundred dollars for for really? one card. It was a Charizard. Yeah. And <laughs> was it original? Like original uh, I believe first, it was first edition. Yeah, that's that I right now. That goes was. for like if it's if it's rated, it go that those go for like fifteen hundred bucks. I think. What? Like that that just right. went over my I head, and I'm stuff. okay with that. Um, but I remember at the time being like, mm, I think I can do better. And I just like, <laughs> sat on it. <laughs> I can do better. And yeah. Nah. Honestly, though, if it's at home in a binder somewhere, like that is you probably, uh, uh, I probably gave it to my brother. Oh, really? Yeah, because he you actually probably, used you them. Now you tell your brother, I'll cut you out. You have that card. That's yeah, now that, I've, now that I've disinherited my brother. <laughs> <your> yeah. Trust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, take your poke. I, I'm specifically disinheriting my brother. You know what to do with that Pokemon because card. Because he took my Pokemon card. <laughs> do, you know, do you know Gary Vaynerchuk? James, because I know uh-uh. Steven does. No, he's this like crazy marketing dude who like I, I love Gary Vee, but he kind of he kind of got a little lucky, and he's kind of like not I don't know. I he mean, bought Wine dot com yeah. in the early in the like not, in like early days of Google. Yeah, and so maybe like, someone who mistakes money. luck for talent and, a little and intelligence in a, in okay. a certain okay. way. I I that said I love he Gary have, Vee. His family owned a wine store, and he made a fuck ton of money. I don't know any. I don't know anything and about. Now he has him, a media so company. You know. Yeah. Okay. He's. Do you remember Baby Nut, the planners thing? No. Okay. Different. They're, but he gives like advice. Wait, like, like the baby, baby Mr. Peanut. They killed off Mr. Peanut, and now yeah. Mr. Peanut had a baby. Yeah. His his media company was responsible for that ad campaign. I question that ad campaign. I know it's it's questionable. It's what fine. I, that guy. That guy's super. You shouldn't big kill off ads. They're timeless. Those characters. Well, certain people should end. Like Andrew Mima should take a breather. But like, like, I mean, they, they got they got so much. Peanut. They got so much. So free probably not. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, if yeah. you're talking about a viral campaign, that's probably one of the most. Is Mr. Peanut offensive to some ethnic group? Because if so, Maybe. it should go away. But I don't <laughs> think I don't it is. Think so. But anyway, his whole thing in is so, like in like ten years, I'll be like, oh, I can't. I'm gonna I'm gonna withdraw that position. Mr. I can't Peanut believe has we to go. Didn't, we weren't we weren't so. An- I can't believe we were pro Mr. Peanut. Yes, I can't believe it. In retrospect, we were fools. I'm going to caveat everything I say with like I would draw my opinion if circumstances change I can't believe that you guys are artificial intelligence I'm terrified that they're going to kill me I'm I'm pro person yeah, that's yeah. True. I'm pro person. That's, that's yeah. probably a fair stance to have for yeah. the next fifty years. Um, One day it's gonna be a real asshole position that I'm taking. That like my grandkids will be like, oh, <laughs> it's like you oppose civil rights for AI. How dare you? <laughs> no, seriously. That's I mean you're that's a, a thing. You're such a carbonist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I am totally prepared yep. to modify my position. I'm evolving on the position of carbon. Yeah. <laughs> like, nope. Um, <laughs> I'm evolving very slowly. I'm ways. still anti. <laughs> yeah. But if it's if it serves my interest to switch sides, I will. Um but anyway, Gary Vee is all about like buying yeah. sports cards right now, and like he's had this like, yeah, which is exactly. great because I have my baseball cards from the '80s and '90s that are just waiting sports to go. Sports cards. Yeah, so he's like buying like a ton of sports. What cards. is he selling? Sports cards. Uh, no, but like since he's bought these things, like he's and he has like a pretty massive audience, and like the sports cards market has just like you know gone crazy. So he's generating demand he's for generating a product. Demand. Yeah. So weird. so he's using his media presence to generate something he can then utilize to make money. Right. 
which yeah, is okay. kind of good. I mean, good for him. Right. I need to call my parents because I have like binders and binders of baseball cards that but, this might be my time to, to dump them. And honestly, you might want to because I, in my, my theory is that he's going to do this, right? He's going to see this giant bubble as his fans go and buy these things and then he's going to hold them for 20 years and then like they're going to lose all their value. But maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? I, I think know. he's going to wait for the bubble to reach his peak and then he's going to sell all of that. But then what's that going to do his brand? He's going to firebomb everything that he stands for. It's no, gonna, like, no. He's going to do it through like back channels. Like, like, oh, I totally still have my card. Is, yeah. there, is there a back <laughs> channel baseball card? For, card I, I feel like most of the baseball card market is back channel. I was going to say, I, say that I can't see it like a Target or something. Yeah. Do they still sell cards? I don't yeah, know. They do. They do. They anyway, know. cool. Um, Oscar, I'm sorry if you have to edit these clips. <laughs> it's going to be a, a nightmare. Um, anyway, great. Um, let's talk about this. Um, yeah. Cool. News headline. Extra, extra. Read all about it. Um, Georgia Tech pays $50,000 to an anti-LGBTQ group to end a lawsuit. Um, Georgia Tech paid fifty grand to an anti-LGBT legal group uh, to settle a federal co- uh, lawsuit after the school's student government denied funding for an on-campus appearance by known homophobe Alveda King. Uh, the pro-life group Students for Life fi- uh, filed the suit in April when Georgia Tech's Student Government Association denied a $2,400 speaking fee uh, for a September 20, 2019 speech by King. Um, SGA members cited King's long anti-LGBTQ history, including her comments in a 2010 Atlanta rally where she compared same-sex marriage to genocide. Um, they say, Dr. King is a known homophobe who has previously said things that can negatively affect our community, and we can't censor her talk, one SGA member said at a meeting um, about funding the speech. Anti-LGBTQ group Alliance, Def- uh, Alliance Defending Freedom represented the Students for Life in the lawsuit. The group asserted that the school violated the constitutional rights of the Students of Life members. Defendants included the University System of Georgia, Georgia Tech's SGA, uh, George... Georgia Tech President uh, Angel Cabrera and several other school administrators. So, and this is from where? Uh, this is from Georgia Tech, and no, uh, this is from. That's a great point. Um, this is from uh, Project Q. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is like one of a. It's like an LGBTQ uh, First report. Amendment cases on state schools are very tricky, and also Georgia Tech may have just made the decision yeah. to. Pay this to make it go away. Oh, they absolutely did. Yeah, I forty thousand. This for is a why I think 50, 50, that you, if a if a university is going to be using university fees to pay for speakers, it should be selected by the university. It should be selected by adults. Like, don't leave it. Like, up to I the think kids. I think what you you know I think the way to do this, and I did some student government stuff when I was in law school you know each club gets X number of dollars and they can do whatever they want with it Mm -hmm. right and and that's that's their money they can spend it it's not like well can we get the student government to pay X number of additional dollars so we can pay this speaker because that's when it gets dicey because that's when you're making decisions and I think that's a great path forward but before we move forward can we regress for a second yeah 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 yeah. can we steal man their arguments right make them as strong as possible um, and can can you guys pick a side quick, and then we'll, I will we'll pick the Georgia Tech side. Okay, he's <coughs> gonna pick the Georgia Tech side, and that is the that is the what side? Is oh, that? sorry, the side that didn't want to have her as a speaker. Okay, didn't want to have her as a speaker. James, are you comfortable I mean, taking the? Yeah, I, side? I, I, I think it's easier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I could take the other side. But, okay, it would be great. As I'm an exercise, I'm as not, like, pro-anti-LGBTQ <laughs> speakers. Okay, and I'm actually not in favor of Georgia, what Georgia Tech did. No, right, it's a messy situation. I, I think you should have speakers you disagree with. And so I'm going to play the yeah. timeline, okay? Um, and then I'll help. I'm also going to discuss with you guys. Um, cool, so... Great that she, she did mistake. Uh, great, gay weddings are not, like, genocide. They're really... Kind of, some of those are actually kind of boring. So <laughs> timeline, yeah. conservative group says we're going to get Dr. King to spe- speak. Mm-hmm. Um, sounds great. Let's do it. Uh, and then the school says we're not going to pay $2,400 to Dr. King to speak because yep. it's the it, student government. Yeah, Because the student government said it could be potentially homophobic. Great. Um, James, you jump in now, right? Okay. Yeah. So and I have, to, I have to defend... We we should give her money. Yeah, we should give her money. You viol- not only that, you violated my rights. Well, and that's the thing, right? So the state is is only allowed to to impact free speech in, in limited circumstances, right? 
Um, and that extends to state-run schools. If this was a private institution, they could do whatever they want. It doesn't matter. Even though it's harder for – even uh, private schools still take public money. Okay. So yeah. since yes, this it is, does become an issue, yeah. yeah. But because this is a state school, they have to follow the First gotcha. Amendment. So the government is telling my, me it, yes. that, that I cannot hear this opinion, and that's yes, where the, the government is. is is interfering in the ability of – of these individuals to to give their speech. Yes, in a gotcha. public, um, public and forum. and it, and it's and it's a system where it's not that they're telling them no, you can't do it. They're saying no, we won't fund it. Right. But That's the they've already much. established that they do grant funding for speakers, and now they're making decisions based on viewpoint. And, and they may be making. I don't know what else they're funding. They may be funding literally pro LGBT speakers or pro or yeah. literally diametrically opposed viewpoints, and that mm-hmm. that would be a problem. Yeah. So mm-hmm. as long as this person isn't coming and making an actual call for violence, like there's very limited things that you can actually. The, there's a, a legitimate purpose in censoring for, for and, legal purposes. And that's where I would, yeah. Because pro- yeah. if I were them, I would make the argument maybe it is an incitement to violence. Or, um, but I, I, it's harder for, I mean, based on that particular speaker, it's a harder position to take because I don't know if she has. It's not like you're inviting, let's, like, let's uh, assume she has. You're, I, you're, I you're asking, right. like, a armed group or something to speak. Right. Um, but potentially, maybe you're also taking a position on that issue in particular that you're discriminating against, that it might create a discriminatory environment for your students. Because mm-hmm. um, it gets particularly dicey on topic. I mean, so hold on a second. Are you, are you, are you arguing against For this? Georgia Tech. Gotcha. You're, oh, yeah. You're, okay, against, you're against, steal, against paying for it. Gotcha. Great. Because yeah. you're, because they're, it could, this, they could be impugning that discriminatory position on the Georgia Tech. So theoretically, a LGBT is a little bit harder because it's not presented by Georgia law. But let's say, but maybe it's for federal funding purposes and other things where it is more protected, or LGBT staff members or other things in there, it creates a position where you might be more liable if it if you're endorsing her coming onto campus. It might make you as an employee of Georgia Tech or a student at Georgia Tech feel that your school is supporting discrimination. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're, if I'm Georgia Tech, my position would also be, theoretically, if any gay, I, mean, I, I briefly do employment law, but if any LGBT member or employee got fired during that time, you would you would add that speaker list uh, to your list of evidence of why Georgia Tech is discriminating against um, gay people. And you would make a stink about it, even though it might be not be part of your legal claim, it makes Georgia Tech look worse. Um, yeah, if you guys as lawyers, but back the hell, I back the hell away from the situation. I, dr- okay. dr- what if you had? To? <laughs> could I? Could I? Could I pin you down and say you have to pick a side? Which side? And you're gonna get a check. I would pay any. I would. I would just. I would. I would just say we're not picking political speakers from SGA money. We're just not gonna get into that. Okay. Probably. If I was the most paranoid. Who do you think has a stronger case? I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a constitutional lawyer, yeah. and I'm, I okay. have friends who do con law who are probably so ripping their hair okay. out. Okay, but yeah. sorry, <laughs> but yeah, my number one just, goal is not really getting complex. sued as much. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I would say that it was so. smart for George. I think, but George has probably saved money. I, by yeah, I don't it. like that they essentially paid fifty thousand dollars to an anti-LGBT, an anti. Group. Well, and like it's it's the pro-life group like you're the pro-life it, group why are you doing mm. is it called the pro-life students for yes, life it's the students for life that are trying to push no, a if, if life came twice in their name sorry yeah sure. it, no 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 it's it's yeah. frustrating to me but i think georgia tech probably made the right fiscal decision to just settle and, and move on yeah because otherwise this could have cost so much money but they need yeah. to look at their public speaker policy and they did they already adjusted oh good it. yeah because now I, it is honestly viewpoint, um and like non-specific. And just like my particular peeve is that I don't think schools should really pick viewpoints that much, unless the viewpoint's dangerous. You're better off just have your students are. It's a college students are smart enough to pick pick good and bad arguments, and hopefully. So and if not, that th- th- that's you failed as a school to provide information. But you should hear pro-life arguments, pro-choice arguments. That that make it, to, make your decision how you feel. That makes brings me to my next question: Is um, let's say that there is a 
you know, big push on campus for a controversial speaker to come speak on campus. You guys are administration. What are your Make thoughts? it a debate. That, it was, a debate. that was the Amherst they always made. is like, yeah. like Ann Coulter is coming to campus. F- quick, find someone who opposes her. Have a panel. Right, yeah. <laughs> that is usually how yeah. a lot of things panic. Yeah, choose. I think if, if you're concerned about the viewpoint that's going to be expressed, generate it into something where, you know, it's, it's going to, yeah, it's going to be a debate. Yeah. Cool. And that was my position too. I, uh, yeah. Cool. It's like, it's or like, theoretically, yeah. I mean, you also, if you really, if you do have a debate, you have yeah. two events the same night, different speakers. Yeah. Or like people if the pick. speaker, or if the speaker, I wouldn't do it the same night. I would do it like so people can go to both. That's true. So, you know, if the, if the speaker mm-hmm. won't agree to a debate, then find, find somebody else who's come and, and make a speech essentially to the contrary. Mm-hmm. Just present, present both options and do that every time. Yeah. You know, don't yeah. just do that if it's like, oh, we don't like this. Even if it's like, oh, we like this, but some people might not. Yeah. All right. Well, fine. You won't like, you won't like everything that happens. Yes. Yeah. No, I love that because every, I think, we, yeah, from, I mean, after attending my school, <laughs> uh, like I, I think that there is a general push to, you know, and I hate to be like the boomer, right? But it's like, <laughs> like, say, Spaces. I hate those fucking people who are like. Because I mean, in a certain sense, that is a good. I think thing. spaces would be fundamentally safe, but right. I don't think words are dangerous. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think violence is make what makes people unsafe. Right. <laughs> not like people saying things to you that you might not like. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I think like there steps have to be taken to to combat because a lot of systemic stuff is propped up by more casual speech. So that's where I think that does find some value. But at the same time, there has to be a balance between, you know, like what's harmful versus what do you just not agree with? And like what hurts right. your feelings, but what is actually causing systemic yeah. violence? And you could qu- and you can protest speech you don't like, qu- even yeah, outside, absolutely. put up your, to have your quiet, peaceful protest. Or when Scalia came to my college, people wore black armbands and sat quietly and did nothing but just note they don't like I what he was saying. I went to Notre Dame. There were plenty of controversial speakers. <laughs> uh, Barack Obama was my graduation speaker. Cool. I have That's never dope. seen more protests. Wow. On in my life. Oh, it was unreal. Wow. Yeah. So, Oprah my, was my when Oprah came to Duke. She was not. Uh, everyone loved her. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> like, sounds amazing. Yeah. You're gonna come back. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> cool. Last question uh, regarding this issue. Um, so, Dr. King is the daughter of Martin Luther King Jr. I believe so. Um, is she uh, a daughter or a niece I don't or something? Think she's, or? she's related. I don't she's she's related. She's in his family. I literally, I literally don't know. I if know this she's is related. Wrong information. I'm sorry, and I'm, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> um, I've read a headline, which is really bad. She's Republican's favorite king. Yeah. Um, no she offense, says her, her position is that Martin Luther King Jr. would have not supported gay marriage, and he like he had a bunch of rhetoric that says he was anti-LGBT. Do you guys think uh, he would have taken that stance? I have no not? idea. He, yeah. He's dead. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Okay. Okay, let me like, I mean, I, there's, it's okay. So for someone born at that time, he was born around the same time as my grandfather. Right. I'm sure his opinion shifted in the prevailing, like, since the, between the mid-60s and when he died, like, three or four years ago. A lot of a change happened. He, he could easily, I don't know, he could be he could be a white nationalist for all I know. Who knows what his positions will be? It would be a pivot. Like Martin Luther King Jr. It would, it would be a dramatic gosh. pivot, but I don't know. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think he would be, okay. but um, I, who knows what his he probably would tend to tilt towards the more progressive side. But I don't know what how he feels about that. His Coretta yeah. Scott King, his wife. I mean, she became a pro LGBT. Yeah, I mean, oh, people really? evolve. That's great. I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that at all. No, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to knock on my microphone. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you think it's interesting how sometimes these like leaders uh, kind of like start representing these things? Like w- one note I had in here is that um, like Gandhi. Gandhi uh, was like if you like dig into Gandhi's life he had a questionable like sexual history with like a lot of his followers it was really weird yeah and, like also he has a history of like abusing his wife and spouse yeah um, and, and a lot of also, racism yeah and he's super racist too and it's like do you th- but like when you think of Gandhi you think of like oh the salt march and like you know like yeah he did a lot of good resistance. he did a lot of really good things right. people cl- people clean up their narratives a lot yeah, yeah. We, we lionize people and we ignore the flaws and <laughs> pretend they're perfect but even in his time, he was kind of racist and kind of terrible. But I don't know. He's also good. I mean, yeah, I don't know. And and what I think is people super interesting. People multitudes. Like Martin Luther King, he had affairs. He did this. I don't I mean, know. Yeah, pe- people he, are people. He's not. He's. He, I'm not. I wasn't married to him. I don't. I mean, Scott <laughs> yeah. like King has thoughts on him. I'm sure that are more complicated than I do. But do you think you know? that there is a parallel there 
Because we, I mean, at the beginning of this episode, which which is why I thought it was super interesting. At the beginning of this episode, yeah. we talked about how you guys didn't support uh, like rights for artificial intelligence, which, uh-huh. in my opinion, two hundred years from now might be a civil like case somewhere. Uh-huh. Right? Oh, 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 almost. Oh, yes, I'm a hundred percent sure. Do you and think you're gonna make me sway by saying, well, <laughs> oh my, well, but back then it was a difference between black people and white people? I am terrified that there'll be an AI lawyer who is. litigates a case against me. I'm, I'm afraid of AI like yeah. document drafting. System. Does, but I am yeah. terrified that a computer has all the information in the world yeah. will have access it's to it. Yeah. Be honest, it's me, a mere yeah. mortal, um, who just wrote some notes down. Do you think, though, that you could potentially be on the wrong side of history? Oh, I've always been on the wrong side of history. Of course. Yeah. If I'm on the wrong side of history on this issue, yeah. history is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> there is always room for me to be wrong. Yeah. I don't think I'm wrong. Yeah, I think I'm jet. Okay, in yeah. uh, my position so far is that all humans should be equal under the law. Yeah. I am not ready to extend that to machines. No, gotcha. And I never will be. Or animals. don't care. Would you think animals? No, animals are not capable. No, animals of, are not people. <laughs> animals I love are, animals. Animal, animals are worthy of respect, and yeah. violence against animals should be prosecuted. But animals should not vote in my election. My cat should not have the same legal rights as I do. My <laughs> cat has the right to be treated with dignity. And respect yeah. and not be kicked or something. No, and I, but and I don't. He I'm, does not not saying, have I'm not arguing for that. Rights. I just I know a lot of like. Uh, and it might be sighing skills. There might be some animal. I mean, we open to others. There might be some animals who are just more sentient than others who deserve different levels of rights. I, I think pigs are super smart. Yeah, they're also really delicious. <laughs> yes, but, no, but like, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to the day where they can make a good fake pork. I'm, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> anyway, yeah. yes. And honestly, that sounds great. But like, I'm not. I'm not arguing that you know animals should vote. Obviously. Oh no I'm no just no. Saying, I'm saying a lot but, of these groups. There, I know there's animal rights activists out there, but also like a lot of like <laughs> rational people. Not that animal rights activists aren't. I rational support animal rights, are. but I don't think we should abuse them. I mean, the yeah. way we make food is horrible. Right. Yeah. But a lot of those people say that in 50 years from now, like when you look at how factory farming and that sort of thing is like it, sentiments are going to change so rapidly as we develop You'll, new meat technology. Yes. Yes. Ezra Klein is one of my favorite um, commentators. He is a vegan. Um, and he has a very strong theory that once fake meat is more convenient, people will realize how horrible the farming yeah. system was. Yeah. I'm, all, I'm on board with that. Like, yeah. as soon as we realized we could drill oil out the ground, we realized how badly we treated the whales. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was too late like, for the whale. Like it my, was too late for them. But my like, anti-AI yeah. doesn't, doesn't extend to, like, me being, like, people only, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just more like, why are, why are we going to make something and then restrain ourselves from having control over something we made? Yes. No. And, more, and more dangerously, well, what if that machine could then make other machines? And then, and then I those just, machines have rights? Well, the, yeah. idea, the idea is uh, not that we it made... Scares, yeah, that, no, it's more terrifying than anything. We need to... St- I, if, if there was a way that we could stop AI in its tracks, even against bad actors, like, I'm even okay with like Minority Report for this one particular <laughs> purpose like if you're thinking about making ai we need to lock you up those are, those are dangerous words yeah. there Steven. i don't know about I, I, that i'm crossing a lot I'm, go- I'm taking a hard take on this it'll be hot yep. and people will be like you're an asshole no yeah. i mean i well i don't know i the, just to clarify that point because i think that's an interesting point i'm not saying that you know hey i made this machine i made a wrench and now we should give the wrench human rights that's not what i'm saying i'm saying like the idea though that if you can make a a, a, a system that like progressively uh you know self-improves wait right? so if you could what a system make a system self-improve but you're you're you create the initial system but then okay so i give, made so i made it you made it but the system has a a I, uh it, there's it gets nothing progressively better you can self- say I, I think noah is I'm comparing set. a machine to a child like when two exactly. people have an infant and the infant becomes a person exactly. who has you rights made that the infant. your sperm sir. made it sorry to talk about your sperm james <laughs> You talk about my sperm all you want. How dare you? It doesn't mean I'm going to give robots rights. <laughs> How dare you? But like, I mean, that's what a child is, right? It's like, why do we give children rights? Well, yeah, well, the child, you know, learns to educate itself. We and didn't develop we, awareness. So, so we didn't decide to give children awareness. Yeah. We didn't decide to give children things like nerve endings. If I decide to have a child, I feel like I'm deciding to give an entity awareness. 
I'm not supporting Noah's Mr. Right. No. I want to make Noah's argument stronger but. because I need to give him a basic, a better yeah. straw man. <laughs> but, but like, well, no. So it, it's kind of like saying, like, all right. So you're deciding to make a child, but you don't get to decide exactly what that, what's going on with that child, right? You're starting like a biological process, <laughs> right? I'm starting an a electronic process of self betterment where this uh-huh. thing will develop. I mean, if if you, I just don't think you can say that if you get to a point where an, an electronic machine can feel and experience consciousness like a person. I don't think that there is a world where you cannot grant that thing rights. I just don't think we're going to agree on this. Okay. okay like, I'm I sorry. feel like we're just so <laughs> like, I think we, I understand your position. Yeah. I do. I just, I think that it's just a bad idea and I, and I don't want to do it. Gotcha. I, and we I'm should talk about, about a movie with estate planning. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm gonna. So I'm, I'm gonna think of another way. But should I leave? But honestly, you're trying to push your synth agenda. The oh, yeah, fascinating yeah. thing will be if a, if machines can possess property and leave them things, or if or how you treat your AI and your will. Like if it's gonna be if people will regard that like leaving slaves in your will 200 years ago, or like leaving I don't know. Like you can't leave. Billy to somebody that's a monster like over oh, who's a robot in the Jetsons and also I'm upset that we don't even have a cleaning robot yet yeah. the best I have is like a Roomba, Roomba it's, <laughs> it's constantly getting stuck on power cords yes it gets like it scares the cats the, it gets stuck on cords it's I'm, I'm very upset about it I'm, James, it's I'm 2020 sorry. I and I'm the, a flying car I hope or you like a cleaning robot I don't I don't feel attacked okay okay I hope I don't feel I, I didn't mean to like back you but in a corner but, but like, okay. oh I'm not in okay. a corner no, I know. oh I'm standing strong I'm on the pedestal oh, saying no. AI people aren't people. Yeah. Okay. Does have, if I were ju- the judge, like my very first litigation, the judge would be like, "Brief your argument. I'm leaving." Yeah. <laughs> Do you send yeah. everyone home to write forty yeah. pages. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Their arguments. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, God, I love that. Judge Tumor is awesome. She's retiring though. <laughs> I thought that was fun. But that was my favorite thing a judge has ever done. It's like I don't want to listen to your arguments anymore. Write me a Brief report. <laughs> yes. All right. Yeah. Um, we're gonna talk about something fun. Um, to bring it away from the uh, the hot topic the of, hot topics of <laughs> like, AI rights, um, cool Avengers Endgame. You guys seen this movie? Seen yes, it? seen it. Great, guys. This is the first movie we've discussed. That was it five six weeks in that I've seen. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. um, cool guys. Also, spoiler alert because I'm gonna reveal the ending. Uh, you, it's, it's by ne- it made a fuck ton of money. You haven't it seen did. it. If you, you haven't seen it, there's something wrong with you by now. It's, like, I think it's on Disney Plus, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So if you haven't seen it. Pause this. Pause what you're saying. Yeah. Go watch it. <laughs> yeah. Then come back. I'm going to read the plots and Okay, office. welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Um, I, love the, I love the idea that someone's going to treat so this episode of our podcast with yeah. that much. And like, now that they're back, in case they didn't watch it, like, in case they watched it like a couple days ago. It's, it's yeah. like three hours like, later. Now. Like, they <laughs> watched it over the weekend, yeah. and now they're like, oh, back to my podcast. <laughs> Here comes a synopsis to really get you back in the moment. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the synopsis is just so that we can play movie clips during the show and have a justification for it so we can get them people to stop. But and just, be like, oh, we have to play just enough just enough in a movie where they get it, but not enough where someone makes a season assist order. Exactly. Perfect. Gotcha. Here we go. Oscar, cut back in here. <clears throat> 23 days after Thanos uses the Infinity Gauntlet to disintegrate half of the universe, Carol Danvers rescues Tony Stark and Nebula from deep space and returns them to Earth, where they reunite in the remaining Avengers, Bruce Banner, Steve Rogers, Thor, Natasha Romanoff, and James Rhodes, and Rocket, the raccoon, uh, located... um, Locating Thanos on an uninhabited planet, they plan to use the Infinity Stones to reverse the snap. But Thanos reveals that he destroyed the stones to prevent further use. Enraged, Thor decapitates Thanos in one of the coolest shots I think I've ever seen. He just goes with the giant axe, and then like it's a little kind of like weird twist at the beginning of the movie, and you're like, oh, the movie's over. Thanos is dead. And then it becomes this really sad movie where like Steve Rogers just leads a support group for people who got turned into dust. That one time they had a gay person in a Marvel movie. Yeah. Who has a dead per- partner? Good time. Who is that? Oh no, that support group. They're, they're almost talking about their husband or boyfriend oh, or something. Right. Yeah. Ah. Right. Right. Anyway, they need to do better. I want one gay hero. God damn it. Yeah, really. I need to rewatch <laughs> this movie too. Yeah, anyway. I gotta rewatch it. It's been a while. Yeah, me too. Um. Anyway, by the end of the movie. Stark gets the glove. This is the spoiler part, right? He gets his own Iron Man glove. It's really cool. And then he does. He goes, "I am Iron Man." 
and he snaps his fingers and everybody everything's fine except uh, sad sad note Tony Stark fries his brain he can't use his brain anymore and now he's super dead um, yeah and it's ha- really sad and Gwenny P he, she's holding on to him she's like oh no Tony what are you doing just um, a lot of state issues honestly yeah I mean, you kill half the population you create a lot of <laughs> yeah, that's super true. A lot of intestacy happening. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Lord, I could only imagine. Yeah, what is the probate court like? If half yeah, exactly. It's like, oh busy. my God, I would just be just. Yeah. I would be counting my stacks again. I mean, you're probably missing <laughs> half the judges too. That's true. And uh, half the clerks. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, yeah. would it be a, that big a shift at some of the courts? <laughs> <laughs> but it would just be like, it's like, oh. <laughs> anyway, uh, like, that's actually super interesting. Yeah. We, we got to talk about this. Anyway, talks. but that, that's. I'll put a pin in that one, but yeah. But anyway, my my premise here is that before Tony Stark goes into this final battle, right, there's that little moment before they, because they, they're the ones that kind of like decide to go and, and make this attack thing by doing the timeline jumps yeah. and whatever. Um, to- Tony Stark comes to you, Steve, and he says, hey, Steven, I'm going to go enter this real risky battle here. I'm probably going to die at the end of this, and I need you to plan my estate. Okay. Uh, he walks in your office. Uh, yeah. Um, th- just to give you some. You should just pay that up front. I don't. I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he seems like a lot of hazard. I might just make him sit there as I write the whole plan with him. Right. You can't leave until we're done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. to give you some context about his estate, because I want you to build him an estate plan verbally. Just like hit the big notes. Yeah. Sure. Just to give you some context, he his net worth is about. Twelve point four billion dollars. Um, it's tied up mostly in Stark industry uh, industries. He privately owns tons and tons of weapons, um, including like Iron Man suits, cars, and different types of technology. Um, he owns a satellite in outer space. I wasn't sure if that's like a uh, thing that you have to account for in the estate plan. Um, to talk about beneficiaries, he's married to Gwyneth Paltrow, um, or you know Pepper Potts, uh, and he's got a daughter. Um, he's also got Peter Parker. Uh, he's not really a formal beneficiary. You know, he's not a dependent, but he, you know, he's Spider Man. He's doing yeah, his yeah. Thing. He's got an expense. I wrote that he's got Peter Parker, who has an expensive superhero hobby as Spider Man, um, and then he's also got Happy's bodyguard to think about. Mm. So he does have. I guess the first thing that just struck me is like he has an estate tax bill. So oh, yeah. right. Now he's over the ele- about eleven and a half million dollar exclusion. Yeah, twelve point four billion is a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's a bit. It's a touch. Even if it was like twelve point four million, it would still be a problem. But that would be a solvable problem. Yeah. But what you're probably gonna, I don't know. I mean, if he was a sole owner, I mean, Stark. I mean, like many companies, I'm, it's, I'm, it'd be curious how it was owned. If he just owns a bunch of stock in it, and he just happens to run it, or whether it's like a not publicly trick. I mean, really, he just literally just owns the whole thing. And also, I want something to call it, I want like industries. It sounds really vague. Um, like he's selling weapons to like Afghanistan or something. Like a no, he, uh, yes, he is. He's <laughs> selling is. weapons to everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. But um, but yeah, you want to figure out the corporate succession strategy. What happens to the shares? Um, okay. All the the myriad of tax issues. So let's let's <laughs> let's make some up. Um, we let's assume he owns most of the stock himself, like he personally owns it. Yeah, and he's going to make his own corporate succession strategy. His wife actually like runs the company, so could we say, great, she's just going to take over operations? Sure. Kind of depends on the corporate structure, wouldn't it? Yeah, if there's a board, they may decide the to, to go decision. otherwise. Gotcha. Okay. Um, but his I mean, stock, if, if he if he has and she inherits the majority of the voting shares. Um, she could probably make a lot more decisions on it. I'm not super in, I don't do a whole lot of business law, mm-hmm. but it, it, would, it would vary based on the structure of business in the state and where it was incorporated. Most likely Delaware. Probably Delaware. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Why is that? It, Delaware has uh, state laws that are very corporate friendly. It's absurdly corporate friendly. So I, an astonishing number of big corporations have their legal headquarters yes. in Delaware. So even their headquarters are like, like Coke or something. Coke will have, they have their headquarters in De- they have, They're incorporated in Delaware and they wow. operate in Georgia as a foreign company. What's like, what's like the biggest benefit of founding in Delaware? It um, makes it part of it has to do yeah. with taxes. Um, Delaware also has a really good um, specialty court system for yeah. corporate issues. Their legislator is really focused on the corporate code. Yeah. So like <laughs> their their judges and like the the folks in their corporate court system are experts and they really know what they're doing. Wow. Okay. Um, it's like a random theory. state that I've decided never, to hone in on there, one very particular thing. Okay, yeah. so if Stark Industries was real, it's, it's, most it's probably in Delaware. In Delaware, yeah, like, that's think, probably crazy. If, okay, yeah. All, if not all, the most of the top like thousand corporations in the country have a Delaware incorporation. Hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But um, 
but so yeah but assuming whatever regulation whatever that is but there would be that part um figure out how he's going to leave money to his daughter i uh, presumably she will not need that much money whether he's going to lump some of money leave her like a trust endowed with some stock or give her a ton of cash and have some does he have, have a to, back with trust fund? Does he have to pay estate taxes on the money that he puts into the trust? If he puts a couple billion dollars into the trust? Yes. No. Well, if he's alive, he would pay gift tax. And if he was dead, he'd pay a estate, which is pay estate tax. Okay. How much is gift tax? Is it scam? It's the same rate. But it's generally about the same as this. It, you, you treat them almost like a group. Um, do you, mm-hmm. Like gift, gift estate, they're very similar as far as the procedure or the rates and the process and i can't think of a percentage off the top of my head but the exclusion okay. is no the worries. same the yeah. rate the rates of, uh, rates are pretty high but it the, it but you have the same life of exclusion you have annual exclusions um and you could take advantage of those and also just depending on what it is you can you can shift a low valued asset into it pay the value of the low thing and then if it goes up then the increase in value becomes part of it so like i say you start a new llc you gift a bunch of shares in it at like two cents of whatever it is into the llc and then suddenly you just gift a bunch of stuff to it actually that would be a bad example but if it if you know this company is going to make like a new product or a new thing and you're just kind of waiting for it you can kind of transfer that basis or realistically with like real estate if you, if I, my, one of my regrets is I, sp- I paid full, pr- I pay a lot of money for law school. I showed it's got, it's got a scholarship and bought a property like in like Ponce or something. Mm-hmm. Um, if you, if you buy a property for like forty thousand dollars and it becomes worth five hundred thousand dollars, you only had to pay the gift tax on that forty thousand when really? you made the gift. Then you mm-hmm. can, then it can shoot up to a mi- whatever it is a million, <laughs> and then you can do a ten twenty three exchange and swap it out for another million dollar property that's a similar value. You can keep doing the stuff like that in games to kind of make stuff go up. So, so potentially his company could be a value. If you're, you'd want to do that, va- yeah. If you're in a perfect world, you would do transfers when the stock value happened to be low. So, so there's potential on paper. He doesn't. He doesn't have twelve point four billion dollars worth. Of well, he doesn't have it in paper. No, it's probably no, entirely not tied all up. Liquid. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure he's got a lot of money liquid because I mean he right. lives a fancy life. Yeah, you can game this. You can game yeah. it where it would. Where, I mean, how much does she really need? Like, <laughs> my my question is how uh, let's. How much does a wife really need? I think you're probably talking a lot of times creating lifetime income streams as opposed to. Giving them more responsibility. Let's say he dies with twelve point four billion dollars to his name. How much of that wealth is making it out, and how much is going to the government? Oh, if, 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 if with a good attorney, you're probably the bulk of it's probably gonna make it out. Really? Um, I mean, you're not gonna end up paying a lot of times. Ten, 10 billion. Yeah, sure. Um, Eleven billion. It's probably gonna be pretty high because a lot of times people are gonna do things like even if there isn't a gift estate tax, you're gonna buy an insurance policy that pays it. Okay. Um, that's cool. You're gonna pre pre would do pay the estate tax. You're gonna pre plan it. You've never seen a billionaire not become a billionaire because of the estate tax. It's so rare. Yeah. Like the Walt Sam Walton's children are not poor. Um, Jeff Bezos, well, his ex-wife now is probably very wealthy, <laughs> but, <laughs> <All right. laughs> but, um, um, but the, the people rarely lose it, um, but there's enough ways to game it if you move enough assets out of the country or move it to various places or title thing. There's so many games you can play that wealthy people have access to, and if you're a wealthy person who wants access to it, I'd be happy to help you. <laughs> but, um, but there are so many things you can do ahead of time to plan it. And a lot of it's going to involve large charitable gifts, um, transferring things during people's lifetimes, mm-hmm. seeing if you can re domicile assets in a place that we don't have to pay taxes and stuff on it. There's, There's a lot of things, things you can do. It gets very complex. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, cool. Okay. Um, it, it, my next it, question. It, yeah. The, the satellite. Let's say I privately own a satellite. Is there something the weird? The satellite in my is estate probably going to be part of the domestic entity that owns it. Okay. So yeah. you, the satellite itself. Um, I mean, it's not like land in the sense that if you if you were going to sue someone, you couldn't like tag a lien on their satellite. I guess you could. But, um, it would just be, yeah, it would have to be Stark Industry assets. Yeah, it'd probably be part of Stark Industries. It'd probably just come with the company. I okay. would assume. Or you might you, mm-hmm. you maybe even set up satellite if LLC I, if I privately that's own owned it. by if I privately launch Stark a Industry. Yes, and um, it's my satellite, and I put it up there. Yeah, yeah, that's probably your property. The coral tree is your property. Okay, yeah. and then I can just bequeath that to whoever. Yeah, it'll be in the jurisdiction probably of wherever you happen to but live. I, I 
I don't I haven't done a lot of research into satellite law, <laughs> but I am confident that there are regulations involving licensing yeah. that you oh, have to get true. government permission to do certain things. That license will probably be the thing you inherit or transfer. Yeah, I think that the, the license will probably have to be transferred and there, there's going to be some hurdles to that. Gotcha. I, Which I is why like, it makes more sense to keep it in a in a corporate it, world entity. Um, yeah. That way it's not it's not the property of the individual, it's the property of the corporation yeah. who has the license yeah. gotcha. and then the individual controls I mean, it. Right now, I think I would imagine every satellite's owned by a large company. I mean, yeah. it'd be a one day you're like, oh, my own satellite yeah. for reasons. I bought a rocket on Amazon, <laughs> and now I sent my satellite. Again. You're like, you're, you're yeah, your unsatisfied with hard. your TV connect. I don't know what it would be. You can, you like, can, get, you can, get, satellite. You can get like micro satellite. It's a really cool industry. I love satellites. Oh, um, but like, I don't know how you get one into orbit. You have to literally like you pay, pay like you pay, a pay like Elon Musk to like nah, launch your satellite. There's, there's private satellite launching companies. You can mm-hmm. pay. It's like ten thousand dollars. It's really affordable. You can like get your own satellite, and it can like monitor. But you have to like it's modular too, so you can put other stuff on it. What you basically do with it? You want you could you can put like a GPS on it. You could put like w- a cameras on it, and then you can like an, or like special sensors so that if you want to like have your own weather proprietary weather company, you can like put like cool weather tracking things on there. Huh. You can do tons and tons of stuff. Satellites are really dope, and they're okay. It's a, it's a developing industry. It's huh. super. Cool. That might be if someone hit, left me a lot of money. That might that be, might be where you or you put your money. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going all in on satellite. Up, I'm going to put two million dollars in gold into a satellite. <laughs> I'm going to get I'm going to get some gold. Launch it. Oh, it gets buried in my backyard. It's it's cool because they you, they have a they have a lifetime span of like five years and then they like burn up in the atmosphere. It, it's it's, it's, it's really like Skylab that fell down. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, that would be an interesting liability case if your satellite fell through Earth and hit somebody <laughs> you owned it privately. Or I like guess hit someone, hit, hit at their that house point, or, would it be like an inherently risky activity? Yeah, so that's probably strict liability. Yeah, that's probably strict liability. My question now is that, about that's, that's gonna be expensive. I hope we have satellite insurance. Weapons. Yeah, or just umbrella. Yeah, weapons. I hope we made umbrella insurance to cover satellites. <laughs> anyway. I have I have gone home and on my week nights and weekends, I didn't tell you about this, Stephen, but I've been building an Iron Man costume. Uh it's like really, really sophisticated. It's a weapon of mass destruction. I can kill people with it. It's fantastic. It's so great. it's like it's like being in the cosplay, but like, but like legit. weapons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like being into cosplay and national. In vigilanteism. Exactly. Try <laughs> <Yeah>. and <laughs> yeah. bring your hobbies together. Number one. Can I build a weapon of mass destruction in my home and no. violate the no. laws? No. Why? So the Second Amendment yeah. only applies to arms. Okay. If it, if it helps, so arms are things you can carry around. So theoretically, you, your arm might cover a bazooka. Okay. Maybe. No. But even that, well, not really. It co- then it's, you're getting into federal. It's closer yeah. to what's called when you shoot like a cannon. That's a t- artillery. Artillery is okay. not covered by it. Gotcha. And mm-hmm. so you can't build a nuclear missile typically. Okay. So whatever your bomb, bomb. is probably is a no. So Georgia <laughs> has um, specific code sections that regulate explosive devices. And that's constitutional. Um, and that, the, and that is all my other questions. Yeah. So <laughs> I was, was so, going to point out the scope of now, what's protected it, by it the Constitution. Is, it is interesting, yeah. right? So they, they regulate explosives and they regulate the, the creation, um, the possession, the transport, and the use of explosive devices but also what you can use to make explosive devices like, and there's yeah. and there's cutouts that are listed right so there's cutouts for fireworks and there's two different categories of fireworks there's uh, consumer fireworks and display fireworks yes. and that is a federal def- definition and georgia uses the federal definition to to regulate it so you have like a lot of fertilizer but not for a bomb but if you're a farmer probably yeah. so there and there's cutouts for things like farming there's cutouts for things like blasting Gotcha. Um, and then for other like entities, but to do the blasting, you have to have a license. So a lot of this stuff, it's essentially you're, you're not allowed to do it unless you have a license. But if, and even yeah. then, it's under very specific uh, circumstances. Say, but even like a state outside of Georgia, let's say there was a state like I don't know, let's go pick a state like Iowa decided to go all in on anarchy. <laughs> or no. well, for I think it's like Wyoming. I, th- I want to say it's a Western state. But let's say, but the federal government still has lots of regulations on it. Right. Right. Okay. The, the federal government heavily regulates like weapons, explosives, et cetera, et cetera. So it's illegal for me to make a f- – ex- number one, it's illegal for me to make explosives that are not uh-huh. f- consumer fireworks. Probably. Yeah, and, and even there, if it's you're, if you're you making – You need to be licensed. So it's, I know it's you can't make consumer fireworks for sale. Gotcha. Right? You cannot do that unless you have a license. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, as far as like individual use, I think it's likely still illegal. Mm-hmm. Um, it's to the point where, you know, they, in Georgia at least, it's like – 
you know, there's a certain weight of black powder you're allowed to have. Really? And there's some, there's some law firm, some lawyer out there who knows this very narrow area of yep. law, like yeah. the back oh, of sure. his hand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So that kind of stinks. What about, what about firearms? Can I create my own rifle out of PVC pipe in my home? <laughs> Okay, there you could raise an argument it's, that a ban is un- one. Yeah, it's, it's complicated, but I would feel better about if I was your lawyer representing you that whether you have the constitutional right, whether any regulations are constitutional. And the current Supreme Court, if it's 6 3, the modern Supreme Court may say you have that right, okay. but currently right. you probably don't. Okay. <laughs> and, and I do think, and, and this is not something I have a ton of experience in, I, I have a friend who knows this area of law like the back of his hand because mm-hmm. um, he's really into guns and 3D printing. Yeah, the he, 3D printing. And if he guns. hears yeah. this, he knows exactly who he is. Um, so it's legal to 3D print certain parts of what we consider a gun yeah. because federal regulations define a firearm very specifically. Like there's only certain mechanisms within the within the gun. Yeah, like the, so, ca- the, the actual like trigger like, mechanism yeah, that like, and, and fires I'm the not gonna, or whatever. Yeah. And I can't remember specifically what it is. I just know it's like a very specific part. It's been shown to me multiple times. Like, like this is the gun. Everything right. else is just pieces. Right. So you can create your own like pieces. Right. Right. And you can do certain modifications, but certain modifications – are illegal. regulated yeah. and illegal. So, it, yeah. Okay, so but basically, I would refrain. And that's yeah. So, yeah, don't make your own guns. My, recommend, well, my standing recommendation is let's refrain from making your own weapons. Yeah. Unless. Yep. You can make you like a, a crossbow, whatever. <laughs> that's my standing recommendation, yeah. but if you did, don't tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so basically. If if Tony Stark made these made these Iron Man he's, suits, he's these probably rich enough to make this happen. He's probably rich enough to make this happen, but he probably did it with the license from Stark Industries. Oh, or something I'm, like I that. am confident that he got a government contract yeah. to do this for the government to use the technology. Yeah, and usually when you do those contracts, the licenses are restrictive on what you can do. So he'll retain certain rights for himself as part of the contract, so like use of the suit, yada yada yada. Well, in in the but a, a the, lot of this would be government regulated. The premise of the second movie is that he owns the suits privately and he will not give them to the government. And he the government may says, have, uh, I wonder if he's this is legal or if he just slipped it into some appropriations bill or weapons bill that he gets to keep the I- yeah. individuals of this cer- this very yeah, narrow that class of, of people. Where the government initially was like, you know, we want this so bad. Like, We'll we'll let you keep some suits. Yeah, yeah. He may have created some cutout. He's rich enough where he could get like some sort of regulatory cutout. Okay, he, cool. Depressingly, there yeah. is definitely a different civil justicism for rich people, and I would. Or, <laughs> he probably figured it out. Okay, so just to summarize here, I feel like we've he owns like, a senator or something. <laughs> honestly, probably. Um, okay, so I feel like we've kind of sat here. Let me let me move along. I've depressed here. myself. From things I've learned, and let me and and yeah. clarify where I'm wrong. Uh, mm-hmm. You can't you can't as a private individual just start making weapons. That's frowned upon by the government. You're gonna go get some without FBI being agents. a special without knowing that feel. I could say safely yes. Yeah, so don't that, do that. Something to avoid if you can. Yeah. <laughs> You partly, don't just accidentally make a and nuke. It's you know? a recommendation. It's partly, if nothing else, my concern that you will blow yourself it's up. It's the right really thing <laughs> to not do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're going to pick up a hobby, try not to make explosive yeah. ones. Can't do that privately. <laughs> Tony Stark probably did it on some sort of contract type of a deal. Um, when he, I'm, I'm assuming that like when he, you know, bequeaths his company shares or whatever to whoever, uh, that would go with it. It would go with it. Yeah, gotcha. Great. That was all my questions. I can't make a pipe bomb at home. That was another question. Yeah, I would highly you. recommend no, not make. You, you, you can. can no, don't do but that. should you? No. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um. Cool. Steven, it's 12:22. I know you had a meeting. Uh. Do, do you mind if we do one more Let's and then close it out? It. Okay. Sweet. Um. Okay. We got Oscar. Cut that out. Yeah, maybe. Um, cool. Um, I mean, I'm all. I'm always on time. I don't know what anyone's talking about. Um, okay. Uh, uh, th- here's a news headline that I thought was interesting, um, and we can talk about this if you'd like. We can. I, I might fire a couple at you. Um, this says homeowner shoots and kills woman attempting to rob him um, in Dekula. 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 Dracula? Dracula? <laughs> Dra- Dracula. Dracula, yes. Can we, can we talk about that? Because I have a couple interesting questions about this. Sure. sure. Sweet. Um, great. Okay, great. Um, homeowner, blah, 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 blah. homeowner shoots and kills woman attempting to rob him in Dracula. 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 God damn it. I, I messed all of these up. Uh, police what? say. 
Um, George has local names aren't even that weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, Gwinnett County, Georgia. A homeowner shot and killed um, a woman in self-defense after she tried to rob him, Gwinnett P- County police say. The shooting happened around 3 a.m. Wednesday at a home on Rabbit Hill Road in unincorporated uh, Decula. <laughs> Channel 2 Action News this morning had live coverage of the authorities investigated the crime scene. Um, according to Gwinnett County Police, the homeowner uh, invited 27-year-old and, uh, Az- Azani Ellis from Milwaukee uh, over to his house earlier in the evening. At some point, police say that Ellis attempted to rob him and shot hit at him as he attempted to run out of the house. Ellis left the house but returned moments later and tried to get inside by smashing a window next to the front door, police said. Uh, the homeowner then shot Ellis. As she was coming through the window, as th- as she was coming through the front door, Ellis's body was found dead inside the car across from the house near the church. The homeowner cooperated with the police, and investigators determined that he def- that he was defending himself and that he was not charged. That is the part that like I wanted to yeah. focus on. Oh yeah, that that seems plausible. So so that's my question: is I also in the <sighs> in the wake of the Breonna Taylor case and the wake of the uh, you know. Basically, one of the officers got charged with like uh, a n- not for, murder for no. firing uh, his yeah. yeah 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 yeah. It was a very very lesser charge um, that seemed kind of like bullshit. Uh, I, I was wondering what your guys take on what the laws are surrounding when it is okay to fire and kill someone with I mean, a firearm. Typically, when is that okay? I guess typically <laughs> legally. Typically, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. James should correct me, but I, I, I was going to say something first before because I might yeah. be wrongest. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> 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 but it's my understanding that you typically so when you're in your home. Yeah. So in other places, if someone's going to attack you, you have an obligation to leave. And, but almost generally across the board, if you're in your home and you're in reasonable apprehension for your life, you have the legal right to use reasonable force. And if they're bringing lethal force, you have the right to return the force. Um, I don't know. This situation is always fast. It's pretty fascinating because he invited them in initially. And then they left. And then, then they, they came back, back in. in. Yeah. yeah. And I guess he, that person must have had a weapon or something. I mean, that would be my only assumption is why the police. Well, I think the story said that she shot at him. She shot at him? Uh, I, if, yes. yes. I'm sorry. Okay, if that's uh, yeah. the case, yeah. Then that would imply. Yeah. yeah that's that would be a reasonable okay. use of force to stop someone from shooting at you in your own home. Gotcha. So, James, can you weigh in on this? And I think it's pretty accurate. I think what it boils down to, self-defense, it, it's. It has to be a reasonable response to the perceived, you know, threat, right? Okay. So it depends on, you know, are you protecting property? Are you protecting protecting your life? Are you protecting someone else's life? Or are you trying to prevent like a, a different kind of harm, right? So to use deadly force, which anytime a, a weapon is involved, it's it's deadly force. Um, it has to be proportional. It has to be reasonable. Um, and, and it's it's going to vary state by state on some of the specifics, right? So duty to retreat is often state by state. Yeah. Um, I do not believe I believe Georgia, Georgia is not, not a duty to retreat. No, you, have, you can stand your ground um, here. You can stand your ground. Now the Which difference there is so if somebody if attacks, you're outside your house, if you're so if somebody attacks you, mm-hmm. um, you're not under a legal obligation to try to flee before fighting back. Yes. Gotcha. Most now that states require not, you to go to your home. That does not necessarily. <laughs> so now, to, if you started the fight, right, right, then it becomes a little bit dicier. What if I? What if I? It was like totally, Trayvon Martin was particularly so controversial. Right, who right. started and, it? But then it becomes an issue of either side had duty to leave. When it was when it was it started? At what point did it escalate? Et cetera, et cetera. Gotcha. But I think when it comes to the home, um, it's it's a little bit clearer cut. So yeah. um, there are ways that you can you know shoot someone breaking into your house, or you're still going to get in a lot of trouble. Yeah, but, um, but, but yeah, but common yeah. law, like back in the olden days, everyone agreed that if you're in your home, you don't have to go anywhere. Gotcha. You can you can yeah. fight it. Right. Having said that, if like a 90 year old woman wanders in or mistakenly opens your door, thinking it was her house. Um, you don't, and right. she walks uh, in, she looks around mistakenly, you have the right way, to blow her away. What would a reasonable person do, <laughs> yeah. right? So if somebody yeah. opens your door or knocks on your door and you fire through the door and kill them, that's murder, right? If they break a window and are entering your home. And they've already fired. Yeah. In their, yeah. Even if they haven't already fired. Oh, that's true. Yeah. No, if, if they're breaking into your home, 
you know, then you, you it, have a right it, to you, use a firearm. You can I'm, I'm going to say generally, generally, a reasonable person would generally yeah, assume they're it's, coming. It's, with it's a, a reasonable person basis. Yeah. Um, and, and there's, there That's are sure, sure, a yeah. lot of things about that, you know, as far as like specifics in the law and, and it gets a little dicey, but, but that's kind of like your, your takeaway is if somebody's breaking into your home and, and putting you in fear of your safety, yeah. you're, you're generally allowed to use deadly force to protect yourself. But I would say in this particular so, issue particularly now, though, you, because he probably knew she had a weapon. And one thing, you are not allowed to use deadly force, generally speaking, to defend property. It's only to defend life. Yeah. Gotcha. So yeah. if somebody's like about to key my car and I you cannot no. shoot them, no. The, well. the most you can do theoretically is scratch them with your key, I guess. Well, you could, <laughs> you could, that you would could be assault, stop, you could stop them. You could you push could, them away. You could push them away. You could, you could yell yeah. at them or whatever is yeah. reasonable. If you have an air horn, <laughs> you can blow yeah. it at them. Um, yeah, but you're not allowed to like stab them. You also couldn't, you know, I, I don't, you, you wouldn't necessarily be allowed to like brandish a firearm, okay. right? You can't even threaten them and say, hey. You can call the police is what yeah. they typically they call imply the you should do. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, if you're not in physical danger and you can call the police, yeah. generally the police. we don't yeah. like so, the wing justice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, I, 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 the reason why I bring up the Breonna Taylor case, right? Um, they, but she was in her home. She was in her home. Yeah. Um, let's say – so basically, police outside. The boyfriend is like accused of some things. Theoretically, but under the, even the castle doctrine, when we have, you, you, under that, under the Kentucky law, he had. If it had been anyone other than the police, there had just been three random men who came into his home at night. He would have had the right to kill them all. So, so that's my question, though. I mean, does mm -hmm. it does it matter that they're police? If it, the does. police are, it, it does. It does. Okay. Apparently, it does. <laughs> it, well, it yeah. It does. I mean, both both in the situation and sovereign immunity, and yeah. the police had good faith and, that they were in the right place. And Something I think like that. the issue that you but. you run into is you know ninety percent of the time, right? You're you're not looking at no knock warrants where they just kick the door in and go, right? Mm -hmm. Those are somewhat rare, and they should be a lot rarer than they are. Particularly in that circumstance, it was us over drugs. You should no it's knock really be limited to they things do it, of actual they violent do it, danger. Yeah. So so generally, again, a no knock there has to be you know a risk of somebody getting hurt or of evidence being destroyed. That's how they do them in drug cases. Yes, because they're saying they could flush then, the drugs. How how important is that case? It's ridiculous. If you're, if, you're, but, if you think like a murder weapon will be destroyed, it's one thing they do a no knock. But it, the worst case is that someone has but drugs. But still, yeah. you <laughs> still <laughs> you know. It, in Still, my understanding, right? That's not yada, a yada, yada, yada. Society. You, even in the no knock, you don't just kick a door in and run in and grab people. You have yeah. to announce who you are. You have to be wearing, you know, you, well, I, I think, were they plain clothes? I don't recall. I, I, I don't remember. But you should definitely be as alert, bring all your but lights. Yeah, you, like, you need to be, you need to notify when you're doing a no knock warrant that you are police. And also, gotcha. in the middle of the night also tends to race. No, there's no yeah. reason why that particular no knock could not have happened at noon. I think, I, and I think that's just a really good example of why no knock warrants are so dangerous. They're but, so dangerous. But people, because, there's a presumption that you're going to be killed if yeah. someone comes to your house at night. And yeah, and if and if somebody if somebody knocked your door down, what's to stop anybody kicking your door down from yelling police? And you're right. supposed to just assume that the person kicking your door down is police and just okay. Yep. Like no. Yeah. No. Guess I won't defend myself. Yeah, that's crazy. No. So Wow, I yeah. never even thought about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really tough. Okay, so yeah, so very problematic. Which is why we should. It should be so rare. Yeah. So it should be like we think a serial killer a is hostage, hiding weapons or the hostage situation. or, yeah. or yeah. someone's life should be. At stake or the ability it needs to, to be prosecute a, true a emergency. danger, like nuclear. Yeah. It, it needs to be an emergency. Yes, if, if you're building a pipe bomb at home, maybe a no knock is warranted. Yeah, it, you it needs to be an emergency it. that yeah. is so great that that the odds of an of an officer who you know play an important role Inside. in our society that an officer may be killed in executing the warrant. Um, yes, because. It's a no-knock, right? You have to look at that added risk, and I think that's where it needs to be an emergency. Like, is it enough of a risk to catch some drugs that we're willing to risk the lives of a bunch of police officers? And yes. In my opinion, the answer is no. No, no. I, I concur. I, I think most the public would hopefully agree that while drugs mm -hmm. are not great— Stopping yeah. the drug trade is not – I would rather have drugs make it to market or be flushed down the toilet than have a yep. dead person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's super interesting. Okay, so um wow. Okay. I didn't I didn't know those things. Oh no, yeah. no, no, this is but the police, they're, the police are really also of my political grandstand. The police themselves should be way more concerned about this, undermine the legitimacy of the police, and people not calling the police or giving the police information that yeah. they think might be used for stuff like this. Yeah, like swatting and whatever. And it yeah, will make yeah. us all Twitch collectively streamers. more endangered. Yeah. Um, let me. <laughs>
summarize my learnings here. You guys point out flaws in where I'm at. Um, if if I am not on my property, I have to respond with appropriate force, even if I have a firearms license. I even if you're on your property, you have to respond with appropriate force. Yes, gotcha. Okay. If someone, if someone, yes, you can't bring a no, the, you can't bring a gun to a knife fight, but not you know what I mean. You can't right. over respond. Right. Yeah. Right, right. If somebody's if you have land and someone's just trespassing on your land, you can't just can't go shoot fire. them. Yes, gotcha. Alaska laws of science trespassers will be shot. That's not okay legally. Really? You That's cannot. <laughs> Trailers are not, not actually legally you enforceable. You can't just shoot someone for trespassing. Yeah. I didn't know that. Except, I don't know, Texas has some weird laws. I mean, but. You have the sign, I guess. It's for First Amendment, you're allowed to have that sign. But when you come, when it comes, when a wheel hits the road, you can't actually do it. Okay. So you always have to <laughs> respond with appropriate force, even if you have a firearms license and whatever, and you're a license, which you're probably yep. educated on when you get the firearms license. I'm sorry. You could be like, I'll oh, yell at trespassers as illegally. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're not educated say. on that it's when a, you get a yeah. firearms license. That sign, that sign is probably not as convincing. Not as convincing. Like, <laughs> like, trespassers will be yelled at aggressively. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, trespassers uh, yeah. will be verbally warned sternly. Yeah, sternly. Yeah. Um, okay, so always respond with appropriate force. Uh, if there's a no-knock warrant, let's say there's a no-knock warrant. Uh, I'm actually, in fact, not breaking the law. The police think I'm breaking the law. They break down my door. They don't announce that they're police because they have a no-knock warrant. I fire at the police. I miss, thank God. Uh, they knock the gun out of my hands, and they ca tackle me to the ground. They search my place. There's no drugs, and they find that they have had the, had the wrong house. But I'm a guy who has a gun. You're going to get arrested. I'm getting arrested because I shot at the police. Yeah, and honestly, even it doesn't the, make it the, right. The, the surprising oh thing with Breonna Taylor is that and you they might, almost you might charged the police for a felony murder for, and the police death. shot her. But if you start a situation with a crime and the police yeah. kill an, an innocent yeah. bystander, you, you can charge you will, murder. You, in that situation, <laughs> you would be arrested. He was initially arrested. For, was, they they yeah. dropped the charge because it was so absurd. But yeah. he could have been charged and probably successfully prosecuted for felony murder in the if in a slightly different scenario. Mm -hmm. That's shocking. That's mm -hmm. shocking. Yep. So you you would probably be arrested. You would probably be charged. You would go to jail. Someone had to bond you out. You probably wouldn't have bond initially. No, because and it was pretty much like first set degree. bond. Yeah. yeah. And then and then you'd have to fight it down the road. So if the police get a no knock warrant and they hit the wrong place and the person responds with with a firearm, the person is in the wrong. Because that's yep. insane. If, if, they're if, going if to an say officer that dies, they, probably that's the thing. Yeah. If if the police are executing a warrant at your house and you know they're police, you can't shoot at them. They're police. Yeah. They're doing but, the, but, you, yeah. have to, you, you have to comply. But if, but if you do, if you don't know that they're police, but that's, that's the thing. That's a dangerous. That's why it's they're not going to just say. Oh, shit, we forgot to announce police. You're right. Okay. That's yeah. not going to happen. And yes. And if a police officer happens to get shot or kill, killed, you, that's a capital murder es escalator mm -hmm. in many states. So you probably will never get – you will not get offered bond no. in those situations. No. So what it would come down to is you know, body cams yeah. if they're being worn. If they're being worn and the lights are on, you can see what's going on. Well, wow. at that point, it's the audio. Yeah, exactly. Audio. Wow, but yeah. it, uh, I think it's a position of a podcast that we oppose the most no knock warrants, yeah. unless yeah. <laughs> you're the very rare set of them. But even then, if you could do a no knock warrant at, during the day instead of the night, I think it's still generally safer. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And guys, an effective investigation. <laughs> guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, this was kind of a downer episode. I, mean, I don't know. Well, okay, wait, wait. You had something in your notes that was a little bit more fun. Oh, what was it? And you asked about is it legal to booby trap your own house? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, okay, hold on. So let's hold end on. on that. Yeah, sounds good. The great. answer okay, is yeah. no. Okay, hold on. So well, yeah, um, if the police the, are breaking yeah. into my home and I know, um, let's and remove I have no the idea why. let's remove the police part. <laughs> okay, no police. We're no ending police. this on a fun note. Okay, if you're if you're by yourself and you're booby trapped to get for shits and giggles and okay. no one else enters your home, I guess it's a neutral event. Here potentially. we go. Here we go. I'm Kevin McAllister. Oh, oh we got to do this someday as a standalone. <laughs> we'll do a okay. Let's not do home alone okay. now. Let's save that for later. Um, what constitutes self-defense? Is it legal for me to set up landmines on my own property no. and, bo <laughs> no. and booby trap my doors and so windows to explode on entry? The classic legal, like, whatever, is a spring gun, right? A gun that is, like, pointed at a doorway, and when the door is opened, a spring causes the gun to go off, yeah, right? That's your classic. Yeah. That is illegal, okay. right? Why? Because any use of deadly force has to be proportional. It has to be gotcha. in a reasonable person standard. So by setting up a booby trap, Right, mm -hmm. that's going to exert deadly force regardless of the circumstances. And a reasonable person would not expect that to occur. Right, it, the reasonable burglar would right. not even. Ex yeah. So, um, but that's the thing is, it, it's not necessarily going to be a burglar, and that's the issue. Right. What if, if it's a be, what if it's a child it on their could bike? Be law enforcement. It could be a child on their bike. It could right. be anything. So, so because it doesn't discriminate between 
whether the use of force is lawful and reasonable or not, yeah. that's where it becomes illegal. It's not that it's like a separate offense necessarily, but basically whatever the damage is, right, whatever is done, you're going to be liable for it. And then there are ways to, you know, you can you can find ways to fit it into offenses if the police are investigating your home and they find things like spring guns set up. Yeah. Wow. It's, it. So, no, it, you cannot set up booby traps, Noah. Shucks. The, yeah. I got to go home and disarm a bunch of yeah. If you're going to yeah. do a booby <laughs> trap, at a minimum, don't make it a deadly booby trap. Gotcha. It's like one thing is like, like a, yeah. a bucket of water. That's not that, illegal. Like, gotcha. yeah. It'd be like burglars will get wet. So I mean, like that's probably confetti, reasonable. Yeah, the bucket of water when you open the door. That's or you fine. open it like yeah. a confetti bomb goes off. Yeah. Or, Shenanigans are allowed. Gotcha. Yes. Shenanigans and that would be in the ballpark allowed. of... Odd but reasonable, I guess, yeah. in those circumstances. And if a if a, if like an eight year old drove over your confetti bomb, they would be weirded out, <laughs> but it would like, be oh, fine. Yeah. <laughs> Just got to make sure the explosive charge used to distribute the confetti is not enough to cause actual harm. Yeah, yeah exactly. It should be not explosive, but sort of make it a gear. You don't want to make it like a gender reveal. Well, exactly. No yeah. force fires. Yeah. No unanticipated bit. criminal yeah. liability. Good bit. Guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure you leave a comment. Go ahead and like it and. Uh, uh, yeah, let us know your thoughts. Guys, if you could share this on your timeline or with people that you think would resonate with it, that would be fantastic. Hey, if you want a will, estate plan, or you want to do anything involving trust or uh, involving legacy preservation, go ahead and give us a call. Our number is 404-939-7562 or send us an email at info at modernestateplanning.com. We would love to help you create an estate plan that protects your legacy and like preserves your assets and helps you out significantly. Uh, that's what we do. We are based in Atlanta, Georgia, and we would love to help you do that, especially with the coronavirus going on. You never know. It's terrifying. Have a great day. Bye-bye.